Hello, my name is Harshran Dhaliwal. I am a technical marketing engineer with Cisco, and today we're going to be doing a brief demonstration of the configuration of the Cisco DNA Spaces Captive Portal. The Captive Portal is an engaging portal that is presented to users when connecting to a Wi-Fi network in a business location. A very typical use case for this is when a number of users are connecting to a public Wi-Fi network within a fixed area, such as a mall. The Captive Portal app inside Cisco DNA Spaces allows the customization of various features such as welcome messages, notices, promotions, applications, videos, and help and support information that are specific to your business. The Captive Portal app also supports a variety of authentication methods such as email, SMS, and social network sign-in for authenticating users joining the network. A few prerequisites that need to be met in order for the Captive Portal to be used are for SMS-based authentication, an SMS gateway needs to be configured in order for a Captive Portal to utilize that SMS gateway and be able to uh, send text messages to users for authentication. This particular example video will not cover adding a new SMS gateway into DNA Center if one is not already configured. However, that information is available within the configuration guide linked at the beginning of the video. For social sign-in authentication, one or more social apps, such as the supported ones for DNA spaces, which include Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, will need to be configured and added to the Cisco DNA spaces instance itself. Some configuration is going to be required on the side of the social network application itself, and that particular configuration is also not covered in this particular demonstration video. Additionally, in order to specify which locations the portal is going to be applicable to, a location hierarchy must be defined within Cisco DNA spaces. And this particular demonstration video does not cover adding a location hierarchy within DNA spaces. It simply covers the configuration of the captive portal itself. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the actual demo and create a captive portal. Once you're logged in into your particular Cisco DNA Spaces instance, we can create a new captive portal by going down here to the Act section and clicking Captive Portals. And then we'll go ahead and create a new captive portal. Let's go ahead and name this portal test. And then here you can specify which locations you want your active or captive portal to be active in. Here you can select a particular location and it will show you which locations are selected here on the right or you can simply just enable them for all locations by selecting this checkbox here. There are several authentication types as mentioned earlier. We have uh, SMS verification with a password or a link, ver uh, or link. Uh, email ver uh, authentication, social sign-in, access code or no authentication. So for no authentication, uh, users don't need to provide any uh, information to verify their identity in order to access this network. For an access code, users will need to supply their uh, a predefined access code in order to access the network. Uh, for social sign-in, uh, users can use a social application login, such as Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn, to log into their uh, into this particular network. Email will require users to submit their email in order to access the network. And then password and link verification uh, would require users to either uh, supply a password given to them or, or access a link given to them via SMS. So on a couple of these here, so uh, for instance, social sign-in, uh, as mentioned earlier, this requires additional configuration both here in DNA spaces as well as on the side of the application itself in order to enable uh, this uh, option. Here we can see the available options are Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn for uh, social sign-in. And each of these would require you to supply a, a bit of information about the application itself that you're connecting it to. Typically, for each of these, you would need to go to the actual social application using a developer account and get an app name as well as an app ID or a secret or a consumer key in secret um, in order to link it with your DNA spaces instance here. If we look at one of the other options, so uh, for instance, SMS with password verification, you can see all of the available options that you get here on, on the screen. You can choose whether or not to display uh, authentication and user agreements on the portal page. 
you can have users opt in to receive promotional messages such as uh, you know op- offers or uh, news or promotional uh, information about the site so opt in to receive And then you can also specify whether you want that to be checked or unchecked by default. Since this is the password verification option here, not the uh, link uh, option where the link is automatically generated, uh, you can specify whether you want the, uh, the password to be uh, fixed. So you can uh, set your own password or you can auto-generate a password for any user. Here you also need to specify the default country code as well as an SMS gateway as mentioned earlier. On the next page here, you get the data capture screen. This enables you to collect additional data from users that are connecting to your network, such as email, first name, last name, gender, or date of birth. Uh, this will, uh, you can make any of these fields mandatory or not by simply checking uh, the box here to make the field mandatory. So we'll go ahead and leave, for instance, uh, email in this data capture for, uh, field. And then on the last step of configuration, um, you can e choose whether or not to enable the terms and conditions and privacy policies, as well as edit the actual um, the policies themselves in terms and conditions. There's a variety of styling options available to customize your terms and conditions message or privacy policy message. And then you can also specify how frequently you would like uh, users to have to accept these agreements in order to connect to the network. You can also specify whether you want the, the accepting of the user agreements and connecting to the network to be a one-click process where a user simply clicks one button to accept the terms and conditions and connect to the network, or a two-click process where the user must first confirm that they are accepting the terms and conditions and then connect to the wireless network. Lastly, you can enable age gating, which requires users to be above a certain age limit. There's two options available for this as well, moderate and strict, where moderate simply requires users to check a box confirming their age, and strict would require users to submit their age in the form of their birthday or age itself, and they will only be provisioned internet if they meet that age limit. After saving and uh, configuring the portal, here you get on the portal editor screen, you can edit uh, specific information about the portal itself and particularly uh, information about how inf uh, about how items are displayed on the portal so we can edit uh, the company information welcome message and you can add additional in, uh, items to your portal such as uh, venue map if you have that configured uh, promotional videos that might be related to the site uh, feedback form that is uh, pr uh, applicable to a particular site or business so you can uh, create a form add multiple questions of different types uh, asking users for feedback on anything relating to your business you can provide contact information so users are able to access help quickly for this site that they're at as well as specify apps either for ios android or uh, web applications that are particular to a particular business or site that you might uh, interest users in downloading here. They can get a direct download link on the captive portal. You can specify a specific landing page here for um, when users connect to the internet where they are, uh, where they're directed to, as well as create individual promotions and offers for your particular uh, use case here. So you can create links to individual promotions for your business. On the right side, you get a visual view of what your uh, actual portal will look like. And by clicking here at the bottom, you can get a CSS editor as well. So you can customize the styling of how your portal will look visually, as well as upload any assets related to the styling, such as icons or graphics that you would want to enhance the look and feel of your portal. And on the right hand side, you, there's a variety of different viewing options where you can view different device sizes uh, and see how the portal will look visually on each of those screens, as well as uh, orient the landscape differently or choose to view the portal um, on your own device by either scanning this QR code or supplying an email address and having the portal sent to that particular email for preview on your own personal device. Now that the portal has been created, this particular portal can be enabled in any particular locations and can be added to any particular captive portal rules. And that concludes this demonstration. So 
I hope uh, this was helpful and that uh, this uh, covers all the options available when creating a new captive portal within Cisco DNA spaces. And thank you.